We already know from observations of brown dwarfs that they have clouds in the atmosphere. Now we know that they also show auroras. It is yet more reason to consider brown dwarfs as scaled up versions of planets rather than scaled down versions of stars. Fantastic. What better way to deal with a broken heart than a story on brown dwarves? This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Where are my brown dwarfs? I'm talking about certain... Astronomical phenomena. This is a tough problem. So. All right, so let me let me get you up to date if I can. I love brown dwarves. You might be saying to yourself, "What exactly is a brown dwarf?" Well. It's like a Jupiter that got really excited. Wait, that may be oversimplified. A brown dwarf is like a Jupiter that starts to go through puberty. There you go, that's perfect. Professional science likes to call brown dwarfs Filled stars, but we know that names, words, and naming things isn't exactly their strong point. So buckle up, Betty, we're going for a ride. Aurora found around brown dwarf. Beyond our solar system. See, I told you the story was going to be awesome. By Rebecca Morel. A science correspondent. The BBC. And it happened today. Eight hours ago. July 30th, 2015. Also, this is great because I've been wanting to cover a story for about a year about how they've been covering the weather on Brown Dwarf Laman 16 B J. And I just never got around to it. But it's neat that the we have the capability to see aurora on brown dwarfs across the galaxy. You know what I'm saying? They totally tell us about all their technological capabilities. Am I right? <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. Am I wrong? In my sarcasm, an aurora has been spotted outside our solar system for the first time, comma. Scientists report the brown dwarf's aurora is red and up to a million times brighter than the Earth's Northern Lights. Well, that's fascinating. An international team detected the light display around a brown dwarf about 18 light years away in the Lyra constellation. 
That's weird. The girl I was just dating, I'm pretty sure she was a Lyra. Wait. No, I did that wrong. They say the luminous glow, which I gave to the girl I was dating several times. <laughs> They say that the luminous glow looks like the northern lights, but is up to a million times brighter and more red than green in color. Really green? So brown dwarf is like the Christmas planet? That's neat. If we found a brown dwarf in our solar system, would we call it a brown dwarf, or would we call it a dwarf, brown dwarf? Holy crap, the word dwarf is in brown dwarf, I just realized that. They put it on the back end, which threw me off, it was like Clark. Can't with glasses. It, it, they put dwarf on everything, man. You know, science likes to date everything. That thing is 137 million years old, and uh, and it's dwarf sprite. Uh, I don't want to get too far off topic. They say the luminous glow looks like the northern lights, but is up to a million times brighter and more red and green than color. Now what's fascinating is because when scientists report a lot of the times, they just say a lot of stuff so instead of like showing us the pictures of the aurora on the brown dwarf they just say we saw an aurora on a brown dwarf and then they have an artist be like okay i'll draw it up and they usually have drawn up before they announce it and they're like hey this is what it would look like if, if you saw it, but don't ask for the photographs or hackers will descend upon you and then worse. The findings are reported in the journal Nature. That's a weird sentence. The journal nature. I didn't know. Na I didn't know journals had a nature. I guess it's to, to have writing in it. Can, can you have right? Okay, but I don't think having writing in you is a nature. Yes, it is. I take that back. Doctor Stuart Little Fair. That's cute. Dr. Stewart Little Fair. Dr. Stewart Little Fair. An astronomer from the University of Sheffield said, This is the first time that we have confirmed we are seeing auroras I'm brown dwarves, which is also a weird sentence, man. See why I love brown dwarves so much? It's the first time we have confirmed seeing auroras on brown dwarves. Cause they didn't tell us that they confirmed it. Science would be way cooler if they reported on stuff. When they, when they first saw it, so even if they were wrong, you know, 
It'd be like, oh crap, we saw lightning on a brown dwarf. And then, you know, when they checked it out, they, they didn't see lightning. It was like an anomaly in the pixels. And, and they'd be like, sorry, we have to correct that. We didn't, we didn't, you know. Hey, we found alien life. And then they had to report back. No, no, we didn't. It was, it was pixelated pixels of pixie dust. Not aliens. Definitely. Not aliens. And then they'd bring in Neil Tyson to Cressy. And they bring in Neil deGrasse Tyson to say, to say, not aliens. And then they bring in Bill Nye to say, not aliens. And you're a dumbass. Not alien denier. Charged interaction. See? You know, life was much simpler before, like, I don't know, before we start chasing around true love and end up heartbroken like a failed star. It just seems that way. I mean, the failed stars be like, hey, I wish I was a real star. The stars and planets have feelings. I have feelings. But now, right now, that is not conducive to happy viewers. So, go. Shimmering auroras are some of the Earth's most dazzling displays. This luminous glow can also appear in all the planets around our solar system. They are caused when charged particles from the sun interact with the atmosphere. But Illuminated brown dwarf, an object which is too small to have become a star, but too massive to be a planet, lies out in the galaxy. But the illuminated brown dwarf, an object which is too small to have become a star, but too massive to be a planet lies further out in the galaxy called LSR J1835 let's add those numbers up 9 12 17, which makes 8, and I like 17 and 8, okay great, it's a cool brown dwarf man, called LSR J1835, it was observed using the very large array radio telescope and the Hale and Keck optical telescopes. I knew they were a horde, and I'm Alliance. We should just get along, really. The scientist watched the object as it rapidly rotated. Really, I would love to watch a brown dwarf rapidly rotate. If you guys don't mind releasing that video footage of a brown dwarf rapidly rotating 
with some magical glowing a hundred million times more than our Earth's own aurora. That would be great. You know, I would do a dance and then tell everybody, hey guys, NASA is so cool. They just released video footage, actual video footage of a brown door spinning around with Aurora. Maybe lightning. Maybe I made that up. Not that I made that up. I just took a guess. It could be wrong. We don't know. Because all we have to go by is what people say. When words may be worth a thousand pictures, but... Wait, what? Yeah, pictures are... A picture's worth a thousand words. Exactly. So scientists are saying, and they gotta say a lot. Cause a picture is worth a thousand words. All we get is words. Man, that plane is flying low. They must be mad. The scientist watched the object as it rapidly rotated and observed how the light varied. The brightness changes are consistent with what you would expect from auroras, said Dr. Little fair. I wonder if he's like the little finger of astronomer. Interesting. Wait, then shouldn't that be the main determiner of whether it's a planet or not? Does it have aurora? If so, then you are a planet. Like Ceres doesn't have an aurora, I don't think. But I would guess Pluto does. <laughs> uh, maybe? We already know from observations of brown dwarfs that they have clouds in the atmosphere. Now we know that they also show auroras. It is yet more reason to consider brown dwarfs as scaled up versions of planets rather than scaled down versions of stars. We've just totally changed the way we think about it. Stars, planets, and brown dwarfs, ladies and gentlemen. There's some hot happening signs here on Thor News today. So I live through it, man. Cause science and women can break your heart. Cut your throat. You know what I'm saying? It's not usually the women that do the throat cutting. It's some other guy that was involved with them that you didn't know about. Well, could have at least warned me that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying there? Other players in this game, and some more psycho. What is it? Anyway, failed stars and failed relationships. They go through phases of failing, I guess. I don't know. Is Jupiter getting bigger? 
Well, this has been another fun adventure about brown dwarfs dancing about architecture and brown dwarfs. I went the whole time and I didn't even mention Amy Manger. That is how heartbroken I am. Women. Alas, say love me. God bless everyone. Talk at you soon. It's time for the funky chicken dance. Human one six. It's got a planet and an atmosphere. I'm confused by this video. Alright, I've rambled on far too long because I love this subject. So, uh, what's gonna have to happen is this. We're gonna have to have part two. So put in the to be continued music right about now. So stay tuned, because who knows what we might find. Thanks.